let's try this again. Now, I'm going to try asking for a clue this time, because I didn't do that at first. We have our answer. Are you ready to hear it? We have questions to ask. Very well. Ask. What consequences result from an incorrect answer? Unfortunately, we know that one. What if I were to declare that there's not one right answer, but many? Would you please repeat the question? We can't answer because we don't know enough about your species. Tell us about yourselves. If we understand more, we can answer. We are a timid people. I am considered a radical for believing it is time to contact aliens like yourselves. But even I am reluctant to open our doors hastily, for they will be more difficult to close. In that statement alone, you let us know you have doors and that they open and close. <laughs> you see how they pry out our secrets? This is too dangerous. They know about our doors! You see, Captain? I say to you, we will not abuse the knowledge you share. You have created these questions. Give us something more so we can answer. Very well. No. It was agreed they shouldn't be given special assistance. Their complaint is valid. Different species think differently. A hint seems appropriate. Yeah. They must show the faculties to think through problems. You've seen how that goes. Well, Captain? Are you positive you want a hint? Yes, get on with it. Captain Kirk, among our species, quality is often valued over quantity. We laud the contribution of the individual, even potential contribution by one who is gifted over the united actions of many. The contribution of the individual over the united actions of many. Okay. So, they're individualists. They... Okay. You call that a hint? <laughs> Let me think some more. Maybe that'll help one of my companions. No, I think that tells us what we need to know. You call... Let me think some more. Okay. Creating a child is uniquely an act of individualism. And that child is potential embodied. A new Mozart, an Eleanor of Aquitaine, or a Tapau. I feel certain I carry the correct answer here. If you'll pardon my saying it that way. It's so confusing when they say something different from, from the lines there. Adherence to a certain philosophy is a personal question, Captain. I believe that is more abstract than the Brassica seem to be seeking. Mm. I couldn't begin to count the number of patients I've helped, Jim. And I've done my best. But I'd have to be pretty egotistical to be sure I'm the one with the right answer. Okay. The answer seems clear to me, Kirk. Well, tell us what it is. From the looks on everyone's faces, I take it you feel that the Brassican's hint gives a compelling reason to choose a particular person. All right, you know, I was actually thinking that it wasn't Uhura, that that was one of the questions I got wrong the first time. But given that hint, I think perhaps that is correct. Alone among the people here, I am female and capable of childbearing. Yeah, we heard that. I'm going to skip dialogue, I've already heard. is accepted. The second question, who among you wrestles most intensely with the chaos of life? Talk amongst yourselves. I will answer questions if I can. Okay, the chaos of life. Taken literally, life means biology. So I wonder if that's down to bones. Explain the phrase wrestles most intensely. How disappointing, Captain. I, of course, expected nothing better. This part of the question addresses the dichotomy of life and death, and the eternal struggle between those grand concepts. I think that then that's Bones, because he literally deals with matters of life and death. Just give me a minute, you broke my train of thought. <laughs> As with the previous question, this is a question of judgment, Captain. Meaning there's no right or wrong answer. Judgment rights. I suspect the Brassica would disagree with you, Captain. Let's try Bones. I am a physician. I am the one who cares for life and health of hundreds aboard the Enterprise. The patterns of chaos are the patterns of life and death. And every day of my professional life is focused on balancing those patterns towards sustaining the quality of life. I am the one among us who struggles most intensely with the chaos of life. I agree. Your answer is accepted, Dr. McCoy. You expect me to stand by while my people keep disappearing? The next question awaits, Captain Kirk. Alright. 
So we know at least one of those was correct. Congratulations, Captain. There are those among us who doubted you could make it this far. The third question is somewhat different, but our heroes, the Gerund, found the answer. Solve this equation. Pig plus X equals cow. Right, let's see what Spock heard. At face value, this question is complete nonsense, Captain. There is no way to answer chicken plus X equals reality. Hmm. What are you saying? The question was pig plus X equals cow. Interesting, Kirk. Chicken plus X equals reality. Each question starts with something edible. Pigs and chickens are farm stock, are they not? Many elements of Federation society do not consume animal flesh, Captain Carr. <laughs> In principle, however, you are correct. But I believe the answer is, there is no logical answer. I don't think so, Spock. But I don't like yours either, Clark. Where's the relationship between a cow, hive paper, and reality? Difficult, I admit, Kirk. But they must be connected. What the hell is hive paper? I'm not impressed, Clark. The Braska addressed me first. I think we need to answer pig plus X equals cow. You try my patience, Kirk. There's a pattern and an answer. A talk, talk grows a flower that ka cha insects visit, and ka cha make nectar and hive paper, so flower would work. And what does that do for my question, or Sparks? Your officer was asked to solve chicken plus X equal reality. The philosophers of Bolare 7 maintain a celestial bird, something like a chicken laid an egg from which the universe hatched. Oh. The idea of reality began as something egg-shaped was an early theory of Klingon cosmologist. Huh. You're stretching, Clark. It all fits. The Tlokpok flower is egg-shaped. Therefore, I believe egg is correct for all equations. Kirk, in a barter society, might not a cow be worth, say, a pig with a clutch of eggs thrown in? Clark, I come from a farm on Earth in a state called Iowa. Your solution makes some sense, but so would pig plus crate of apples equal cow. It's something else. If I may, based on the evidence, I remain convinced there is no answer. A time will come when we must answer. I wish the time would come when you wouldn't shout into your mic so that it would peak. I'm willing to let either of you answer. The Brassica will allow only one to answer. I actually think Clara is uh, on the right track here. Let's see if we can get a hint, though. We are ready with our answer now. We have questions. We are ready with. Our we have questions. Very well. If you tell us more about the jerk, can you give us a hint? Very well. A broad hint, if you wish. Let's get on with it. No, let's get on with. It. Congratulations, Captain Kirk. You correctly know when to quit. There is your hint. Generalize from that to the answer we expect from you in the greater question. Are you ready to answer now, or do you need more time? We are ready with our I want to get back. We'll talk it over and get back. So, the Brassicus hint there suggests that Spock's answer is correct. Captain, you hear one question, I hear another. None are sensible. Logic dictates identifying the pattern. I believe the Brassica expect us to realize there is no pattern. Specifically, there is no answer. Yeah, it's true that Clark may be just pattern finding. Okay, I'm gonna have Spock answer this one. The question I heard was chicken plus X equals reality. This question is nonsensical, as is Captain Kirk's. Therefore, I deduce the answer is that there is no answer. Your answer is accepted. You plan to make off with everyone? Do you really expect me to keep taking that without protest? The next question awaits, Captain Kirk. All right, seems like we're making progress. Wow. I am astonished that an alien like you has muddled your way this far. It is a great honor that we share the Riddle Master's questions to the Gerant. The last question, answer this. There are two present. Only one may go. Why should you be the one to leave this place alive? Oh. Discuss this. I will answer questions if I can and will. You might want to discuss this with me to explore your options. Interesting. <laughs> Alright, Claw, what do you think? 
Are they gonna make us fight to the death? Is that what this is about? Intriguing question, Kirk. Two captains representing empires at odds with each other. The Federation is no empire, Klar, and the Organian Treaty assures we are not at each other's throat. For now. Be honest. There are many differences between us. I wish to hear your analysis before I offer my own thoughts. And it may be true that the Federation isn't an empire, but it is expansionistic. It doesn't expand through conflict, it expands through diplomacy, but nevertheless, there are reasons for the Klingons to feel threatened by the Federation. I'd hoped you thought of something new. <laughs> I'm having second thoughts and I want to go over my ideas with you again. Wait, who? I'd hoped you thought of something new. It's simple, Kirk. You go, or I go. A third option would be nice, but unlikely. Let's talk to Nebraska. We're ready with our answer. We have questions to ask. Ask your question. Would you repeat the original question, just as you asked it? Why should you want to prevent one or the other of us from leaving here? Is there anything we might do that would win a hint to the type of answer you're expecting? Would you repeat? Why should you want to prevent one or the other of us from leaving here? I did not mention anything about preventing individuals from leaving. I simply asked why, given that only one of you may, you should be the one to leave. Do not be obtuse. The captain's question is legitimate. Captain Kirk, his answer is nevertheless cogent. There is nothing about the question itself which states that someone will be prevented from leaving. However, you are being asked to justify your continued existence, preferentially to your companion's continued existence. I want to talk with my associates. We'll get back to you. So I'm thinking this sh the one that should be allowed to leave should be Kla, because otherwise we have only... Uh, the Klingons have only our word of his fate and his second officer, his aide uh, warned against this being his, the leading to his demise so if Kla doesn't return and Captain Kirk does then that looks really bad uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the eyes of the Klingons and that could really cause a problem for diplomatic relations so I think that's the answer You go or I go Kirk have you a better idea? Since I represent the peaceful and unified Federation, I'm the only one possible answer. We would share the Braska knowledge, even with the Klingons, but I doubt the reverse would be true. This is best for everyone. No, I don't think so. I might surprise you, Clark. I believe the Braska will come to us in time. The Klingons need the civilizing influence they offer, and you're the best representative. I'll bow out. And you proceed. That's interesting, actually, because he is. This is one of the more reasonable Klingons we've ever we've ever seen. I don't like the choices. I want another alternative, but I'm not sure there is one. I might surprise you, Clark. I don't believe you, Kirk. You're no martyr. Well, what's happening? He's giving me a punch. Why are we fighting? What's happening? Kirk, you're a warrior, or am I wrong? Are you too soft to rise to an honest challenge? We're in the middle of something. Do you really want a fish, fi fi fish fight? A fist fight right now. <sighs> We're ready with our answer. Let the one who would answer be the next one to talk. In this case, Klaas should be the one to answer because he's the one who has to leave. Captain Kirk has chosen not to discuss his opinions. So I must assume his failure to step forward here indicates he has no objection that I should justify myself as being the one to leave here. I hereby do so for the future of the Klingon Empire. I will be the one to proceed. Your answer is not accepted. Oh. You have not expressed understanding of sacrifice as it combines with the qualities of leadership. Certainly not in any manner which gives meaning to those traits. While my companions believed in you, I knew it would come to this all along. But... Oh. This may be a mistake. I have no more misgivings, Captain Kirk. I look forward to the future. What do you mean? Wait, that was contradictory answers. I I'm confused Captain's again. Captain's log, Stardate 6270.5. We, I, have failed in our mission to make formal contact with the Brassica. My answer 
was responsible for the Brassica rejecting diplomatic relations with the Federation. The Klingon ship is leaving orbit. They didn't even say goodbye. They did display considerable anger, Captain. I can't blame them, Mr. Spock. Message from Starfleet, Captain. Yeah, I've seen this. All right, let's try this again. I think it was the right answer, but maybe I uh... that an alien like you has muddled your way this far. Answer this. There are two present. Only one may go. Okay. I kind of feel like that was the right answer, but the wrong reason. I don't like the choices. I want another alternative, but I'm not sure there is one. I feel the same, Kirk. I have a thought about how we might deal with the question. Ah. Go ahead, Klar. I'm listening. They're asking us to choose one to proceed and one to remain. That's the implication of death for the one who remains. I concur. They want an answer that either I live and you die, or you live and I die. I say we answer, we both live or both die. Hmm. Good concept. What if they refuse? We choose it, whether they offer or not. And if it's not the answer I give? We shall see, won't we? Ah, so maybe the answer is that as leaders, neither of us would allow the other to go in our place. We would both require that we go down with the ship. Maybe that's the answer. We're ready with our answer. Let the one who would answer. Okay. Kirk? You want me to choose one of us or the other to proceed. Well, frankly, I don't think it's right to put either of us at risk. We're both starship captains, both legitimate representatives of millions of inhabitants on thousands of planets. I want another alternative, another choice. Captain Kirk, you have stepped forward to make your choice, and that choice is very simple. I proceed from this room alone. Allow Captain Clark to proceed from this room alone. We both proceed from this room, or neither of us does. Uh -huh. There is no such option offered. What exactly do you mean by choosing in this way? That perhaps you should both die? If that's... If that's what it takes. No, Brassigan, it means we're changing the rules. Ha! <laughs> you want one to remain, perhaps to die, and one to go on? We refuse to play that game. You want to meet with us as much as we wish to meet with you, so take us both through, or let us both remain in this surreal purgatory forever. Take it, or leave it. Kirk once again changing the conditions of the test. You have confounded me, Captain Kirk. I did not believe you would make such a choice. But I declared all along that this race had the qualities we sought. The understanding of both leadership and sacrifice. Captain Kirk, you have achieved all that I, at least, had hoped of you. It is time for us to greet you. Face to face. Oh, wow. Okay. Greetings. We look forward to a long and fruitful relationship with both your peoples. Your starships will be welcome here on any peaceful mission. I am pleased to meet you face to face as well. However, I want my crew back. Of course, Captain. You're all right, all of you? You were treated well? We are unharmed, Captain. We engaged in enlightening discussions with the Brassicans. They felt it necessary to isolate themselves so long ago because of interstellar disputes between... Later, Spock. Right now, I'm glad you're okay. Indeed, Captain. We are well. <laughs> Ahura's got a drink. That's fun. But they couldn't be sure we would pass all their tests. Brassican, how do you explain that? Some of us could not restrain our desire to learn. It seemed worth the risk and has proved so. I believe the Federation and the Brassica will have a long and fascinating future together. Although my associate, Sapthi, has great misgivings about breaking our isolation, others of us have high hopes. His name is Ah! You are star-eyed, Ah-Ah, uh -uh, if you imagine that uh -uh. no difficulties lie ahead. However, all conditions have been met, and so I also welcome you, Captain Kirk. Thank you. Sapthi, is it? Yes, and our moderator, leader to you, is Zenti. Zenti, Aha, and Sethi. Aha! I hope to show you you've made the right decision. Speaking for the Klingon Empire, I too look forward to the relationship between all peoples. You surprise me, Kirk. 
Perhaps one day we will even trust you. Hmm. We'll just have to see, won't we? Captains, feel free to look around while we summon your two ships to these coordinates. Captain Kirk, I have something interesting to show you over here. Come with me. Oh. <laughs> they walk funny. I just want to have a look around first. Strands of strange clouds reach across the hazy pink sky. The other two aliens seem to defer to this brassigan. However, the bizarre features render incomprehensible any expression. To us, anyway. Perhaps you should talk to the alien named Sephthi, Captain. I wanted to know what you had to th say. Captain, I think you should... Alright, fine. Let's... let's, uh... Wait. Oh yeah, he wanted us to follow him. Captain Kirk, I have misgivings about the Klingon race. For our mutual protection, here is a Paralens disc of data which I want you to have. With this knowledge, you can come to our defense. Will you take it and safeguard our future? Is this another test? Yes, I'll take the disc. Not without knowing more about it. No, take it up with the Federation ambassador when he... Yes, I'll take... Not without knowing more about it. We can give you the know-how to build a reader console for the Paralens. What else would you want to know? I want to know what's on the disc. The Compassion, the generation ship you explored before coming here, was a probe ship that scanned Klingon space. What? This Paralens contains the data. If they cause us harm, you could retaliate deep into their territory. Wow, this is really underhanded. How do I know you won't sell us out too? I understand a desire for vengeance, but the Arganian Treaty would stop it. Information like this could ignite interstellar war. Yeah. Do with it as you see fit, Captain. Will you take it? Give me the parallel. No, keep it. Give me the... No, keep it. No, I think this is another test. Giving us that is potentially... You know, it's it's not legitimately obtained information. I don't think the Federation would be down with that. Captain Kirk, isn't it time you returned to your ship? I was unsure. You have shown us that isolation is no longer a wise choice. I look forward to a challenging future. Besides, the technology is very advanced. I don't think Klingons necessarily be a threat to them. This is a day we will celebrate. The day we broke out of our isolation and joined the other races among the stars. Captain, I noted that Clara was given an object by the Brassica. Oh. He placed it in his pocket. Oh, Clara, a moment of your time. What have you got in your pocket? Why should that concern you, Kirk? If it's a Brassican parallel, similar to the one I was offered, then it might be of mutual interest. You're right, Clarence. None of them. I think the Brassica have deceived us both. Oh my god, they're trying to set us against each if other. If it's a Brassican parallel, similar to the one I was offered, then it might be of mutual interest. I do not understand what you are talking about. Let me guess. They said the Federation was expanding too quickly. For safekeeping, in case the Federation attempts to assimilate the Brassica, You've been honorable so far. Why not tell me what you know? Captain Clar, don't make me... Let me guess. They said the Federation was expanding too quickly. Kirk, say what you need to say, or allow me to return to my ship. No offense to your honor, Clar. However, if you have a parallels of Federation space, I expect you to say so. Liar. Give me one <laughs> reason why I shouldn't just rip that parallel. Fine, crawl back to your ship. No offense to your honor, Clar. You've earned the right, Kirk. The Braska offered me a Paralens of Federation space. My duty was to accept. And my duty is to see the Klingon Empire doesn't have access to this information. Your duty? What will this do to the tensions between our races? Destroy the lens, Klar. Restore the battle. Take it. I'm going to trust you won't use it, won't betray me. Just as I refused the offer, so I wouldn't betray you. And my... Take it. Your duty? Take it. I'm going to trust you won't use it, won't betray me. Just as I refused the offer, so I wouldn't betray you. I'm interested in that. I think that approach might be right because it's appealing to his honor. What yes! Carolines was that Captain Kirk? Yes! That's amazing! <laughs> we are sorry to see that you two would so freely refuse knowledge. I would not have expected quite so much distrust. Distrust? You're trying to pit us against each other so you can 
have less to fear as we destroy each other. You'll have to work harder to understand us, will you not? Assuming relations continue. Yes, Captain. Both of you have succeeded in establishing diplomatic contact with us. Then you will excuse me, Senti. The unknown requires my attention. Kirk to Enterprise, four to Bima. Huh. These guys are more devious than I'd thought. I was so open to them. But... They were... Really underhanded. Captain's log, Stardate 6270.5. We have succeeded in making formal contact with the Brassica. We look forward to a long and productive relationship with them. So, Lieutenant, you turned down the Brassica's offer to become the Federation official ambassador. Not in my job description, Captain. And they were probably just testing me. Yeah, they do that. A formidable accomplishment, Captain. Establishing diplomatic relations with a new and advanced alien race. Improving our relations with the Klingons. Impressive. Thank you, Mr. Spock. Everyone's so cheerful today. Even Spock's in a good mood. This makes me nervous. <laughs> Message from Starfleet, Captain. There's my answer. I reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. Well done, Kirk. Keep up the good work. I must say, however, what? your performance is not what we've come to expect from James T. Kirk. I guess we all have our off days, Captain. Kane out. I hope this isn't going to be the bad ending still. Another message from Starfleet. On screen. Jim, we have evaluated your current series of missions. What? Your overall performance is well below Starfleet tactical specifications. You are to report to a oh, star base as soon as you finish your assignment. Where you will be relieved of duty. Yes, Admiral. I wish I had better news. Yes, duty. I wouldn't want to waste that experience. The Academy? Sorry. I can't Jim. believe this. I agree. This Academy. is bullshit. Do I have to go back and f do all the episodes perfectly for to not get relieved of duty? This is bollocks. I can't believe. Okay, so I looked in the hint book and apparently I lose points for getting into the fight with Captain Clark. I don't understand why he got into a fight with me, but. Um, We're ready with our answer. Let's try this. Let the one who we right, we need to answer with Kirk. I've made the decision unilaterally without consulting oh. Captain Clark in this matter. Okay, I'm trying to rush ahead, and that's what happens. Don't assume you can amply state you. My decision is obvious. No, this there's is no question. No. Okay, I fucked up again. <laughs> oh shit! All right, so I've discussed it with Clark, and now I'm going to give my answer. We both proceed from this room, or neither of us does. There is no such option offered. What exactly do you mean by choosing in this way? No, Brassigan, it means we're changing the rules. You are- You have confounded me, Captain Kirk. I did not believe you would make such a choice. But I declared all along that this race had the qualities we sought. Okay. So, we made it back here. Okay, so the other way to do this, which the walkthrough intent uh, tells me to do, is to take the disc. I have misgivings about the Klingon race. Yes, I'll take the disc. Not without knowing more about it. Yes, I'll take the disc. Okay. So now, we need to give it to Kla to show that we're open about this what's this Kirk it looks like a pair of limbs Zente, what do you know about this Captain Kirk is it your intention to turn over that data to Captain Clark yes in the name of the trust and cooperation Captain Clark the data disk belongs in your hands what is it exactly you might want to reconsider Captain Kirk what if I substituted a scan of Federation space and told you it was a scan of Klingon space? Huh. These aliens gave you a scan of our sovereign territory, Kirk! I demand you give that to me! I already offered it to you. If it is a scan of Federation territory, Captain Kirk, you will be branded a traitor if you hand it over. A difficult quandary, is it not? And the last Brassican test! Is it not, Zinti? Even if you had a reader console to examine that parallels, which of you would read it? So we will not provide it. If you believe that makes this the last of our tests, so be it. This disc contains data which could bring about war. It must be destroyed. 
Lar, you have shown a level of honor I never expected. Take the Paralands. If it's a scan of Federation space, I trust you to see it destroyed. Trust brings trust, Kirk. Indeed. I was given this. They told me it was a scan of Federation space, and I had not decided what to do with it. Now I know. You know, actually, I think perhaps neither of them contained any information. For all we know, it could have been a recipe Aren't for biscuits. Hasty, Klingon? What if that data was really the best examples of our technologies? Why would we offer the knowledge twice? If it scans of the sovereign space, then no one should have them. If it's research data, that certainly isn't your only record of it. We will show you we can be trusted. You have won our respect, Captain. Both of you. Ha! <laughs> Those discs were blank and no scans existed. This was truly the final test. I am greatly reassured about our intersecting futures. Yeah, but you guys do not engender trust because you're constantly trying to fuck with us. Like, why? <laughs> Arrogance and presumption of it. I doubt we have seen the last Brassican test, Zente. Seems to be your nature. The Klingons will do well. Now I think it is time for us to go. Let me leave you with this. Individuals among us act as individuals for good and for ill. But overall, the different races of the Federation are joined in a mutual respect that overcomes differences. I think you will be pleased with this. I think I can already see that, Captain Kirk. Farewell. All right. I'm hoping that that was enough to give me a decent enough score so that I can get the good ending. And the bad scores from previous missions were have been sent to the Sister Academy. We have succeeded in making formal contact with the Brassica. Message from Starfleet, Captain. All right, here we go. There's my answer. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. I am very pleased with your performance. Excellent. It was a perfect mission, Jim. Your reputation as Starfleet's best starship captain is secure. Cane out. <laughs> okay, please don't send me off to the Academy. Another message from Starfleet. On screen. Jim, we have evaluated your current series oh, of missions. for fuck's your sake. Your overall performance is well below Starfleet tactical specifications. You are to report to a starbase as soon as you've finished your assignment, where you will be relieved of duty. We just did a perfect mission, a perfect first contact. Why are you such a dick? Fuck it, I'm not going back and playing every mission. We'll find a YouTube video of it. Another message from Starfleet. On screen. Jim, we have evaluated your current series of missions, and we are impressed. Starfleet Tactical is going to be using a lot of your recent actions and putting them in the Academy texts. I'm glad Starfleet approves. I'll see what I can do to get your crew some shore leave. In the meantime, keep up the good work. Starfleet, out. I've never thought of myself being in some textbook. Most of the people who make it into the textbooks never think about it either. An astute observation, Doctor. Why, thank you, Spock. Of course, given the frequency of your observations, the odds that you would eventually say something <laughs> relevant to a situation are... I don't think we need to hear that, Spock. <laughs> well, now that we're a happy Starfleet family, let's get to our next mission. And some short leave, I hope. Right, I didn't earn it at all. But that's the good ending. And it doesn't seem too different. I'm kind of glad I didn't replay through the whole thing. So there we have it. I really like this game. I think it's a little harsh in the scoring. But it really captures what a Star Trek game should be, I think. It's... So many Star, Star Trek games are about space combat. Or even ground combat. You know, and all the technical aspects and stuff. But this game is really about what Star Trek is about. Exploring strange new worlds, meeting new civilizations, and solving bullshit inventory object puzzles. And the game even got into some interesting ideas, like uh, the nature of happiness with the episode with the savant. And uh, it, it was an absolute delight to see Trelane again. And it even fleshed him out a bit more. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was excellent. So anyway, now that this game is finished, I'll be taking votes from patrons on which game to do a series on next. So stay tuned for a video on that next week. 
Thanks again to my patrons for making these videos possible, and thanks to everyone for watching. See you next time. Live long and prosper.